somewhere. Hello, Vera. Very good morning and welcome to this special update on the status of the uh, elections uh, 2020. Of course, um, the court yesterday um, ruled, the, the appeals court ruled in a matter brought by a supporter of the APNU AFC. I have joining me this morning to discuss um, the current status, Attorney at Law Sanjeev Datadin and Attorney at Law Priya Manik Chand. Priya, Sanjeev, good morning and welcome to the program. Good morning, Eddie. Good morning, morning, Sanjeev. Good morning, good morning, morning, good morning, good morning, morning. George. All right. Following yesterday's ruling, um, very, very controversial, um, very, very unorthodox ruling um, where the court would have given itself certain uh, powers that based on the, the, the legal views um, did not exist. Sanjeev, I'm going to start with you. Um, your review of yesterday's ruling um, and what it meant, really. Um, the simple argument would have been whether or not the court had any jurisdiction to hear the matter. Um, our arguments were essentially that they did not have any jurisdiction to hear the matter for two reasons. There was no statutory mechanism that had been put in place, which the provision requires be put in place before it can be heard. And the second reason was that it would only apply after the president had been elected, which means that there had to be a declaration of who was the elected president. And of course, that follows with taking a note. Now, the ruling that they made was to say that it, the provision of 177.2 of the Constitution meant where it said the person who would be president is the person who got the most votes they said that it meant most valid votes. But it clearly must mean most valid votes because it didn't mean most invalid votes. It meant most valid votes. And if you look at all the statements of recounts for all the 10 regions, it is clearly identified and demarcated and spelt out that these are the valid votes. Now, that has already been done. That has already been introduced. So there is no reason why for, for this to change, the, the report that was submitted originally by the CEO of GCOM did have the part that says that the, these were the valid votes and the PPP had won the election by 15,416 votes. So this ought to have confirmed it. But you've seen what has happened on social media and in the various outlets about what the, the coalition supporters are saying this means. It, it wrongly says that it means Lowenfield can decide valid votes. He can't do that. He doesn't have any mechanism to do so. How would he do it? So the ruling about what the valid votes is only confirms that the PPPC have won the election. Priya, your, your thoughts? Well, the, there were two questions before the court. Well, the, the court was asked to give very many orders um that would give effect to the AP and UAFC's attempt to, to rig the election. So what they did, um, so Ms. David was really, and I don't think anybody anybody thinks it's different. Ms. David was really as as um Mr. Granger may as well as put have put his own name to that application because she's his agent, um, his party member doing for them what they wanted to do. So what happened is they tried to use the Court of Appeal to give effect to their effort to rig and in so doing sought a set of orders, including that Mr. Lowenfield shouldn't deliver his report and so on. Of those orders, only two were granted. One, the court decided, well, one was granted, but for it to have been granted, the court had to have given itself the jurisdiction. So the court said it has jurisdiction to deal with the matter. We do not hold that view. Uh, most right thinking people in the profession wouldn't hold that view. Effectively, the court said that if you want to challenge the members of the assembly, you do that in the high court, but you can't challenge the um, presidency in the high court. You have to go to the court of appeal. That should tell you that that is a kind of nonsensical position. It is jurisprudentially bad and it needs to be corrected 
what we so what the court said is they have jurisdiction gave themselves that jurisdiction and then use that jurisdiction to say votes more votes cast mean more valid votes cast ppp was never in doubt i don't believe the pnc was ever in doubt the Guyanese people are not in doubt about what kind of votes we count. We can't count in valid votes. It's always been valid votes we're talking about. Um, the commission has only always been talking about valid votes. The commission, when they did the recount, the entire commission secretariat plus GCOM counted valid votes and recorded those valid votes on each certificate of, of recount uh, um, by using the word valid votes, total valid votes cast total valid votes cast for each party. So we're not in doubt about what valid votes mean. It is a little worrying and I'm going to say something, you know, I'm a lawyer so I could get dragged before the court for contempt, but I'd like to think first and foremost, I'm a citizen here. Um, one that has a duty to look out for um, not only me and my children, but for this country. We have to question why why Mr. Granger and his agents chose the high, the Court of Appeal, which is extremely strange and wrong, to um, have this question determined. And we have to question if the court gave itself jurisdiction where no one else really would. And we're going to get to see that soon in the appeal. Um, what else they wouldn't give themselves jurisdiction for? We are very sure that um, the court does not have jurisdiction to deal with this matter and the way that it dealt with the matter. Um, the PPPC has, well, the, the offending parties, offended parties have since appealed that, and we'll see the CCJ making those pronouncements. Um, I'm confident about that. In the meanwhile, what we have is um, a, a non-issue about whether votes are valid or, or not valid. It's not an issue. It's never been an issue. So it's a, a curious matter that the court thought it's itself um, bound to determine something that was never really an issue. Uh, but, but that parrots, the line of the AP and UAFC, a political party contesting these elections. Let's not get distracted, Eddie. What is the truth? What is the truth that we all know? We know the elections were conducted on March 2nd. We know that by March 3rd in the midday, everybody knew what those results were. We know that by the 4th of March, there, be, there uh, started specific attempts to rig the election with Mr. Mingo fainting away, falling sick, and then Mr. Mingo trying to use a spreadsheet that did not reflect the way the people of Guyana voted. We know that on the 5th of March, despite objections to the usage of that spreadsheet, Mr. Mingo, without tabulating the votes, went and declared election results for District 4, Region 4, that did not reflect and do not reflect the way the people of Guyana voted. We know that the High Court vitiated those results because it, it said that they were done badly. We know they told Mr. Mingo to go back and do this properly where all the parties could see how the people of Ghana voted and how that was recorded in the statements of poll. And we know that Mr. Mingo did not do that. And again, handed to the APNU AFC votes that they did not get. We also know that the parties agreed to a recount. These are all truths. Nobody can dispute any of what I'm, I'm telling you here. Agreed to a recount under the supervision or observation of the CARICOM team. We know that that recount happened and throughout that recount, all Mr. Mingo's uh, numbers were exposed as fictitious numbers inflated for the APNU and deflated for the PPP with an, an overall effect of giving the APNU AFC more votes than the people of Guyana wanted to give them or gave them. We also know that throughout that period, the AP and UAFC, knowing that they cannot win the election, began to make some very strange claims, including, and these are their words that you could literally put in quotation marks, the dead rose up, went to vote, voted, and then went back to rest. The kind of ridiculous claims that we saw. We also know that claims were made at persons who, are migra who have migrated and were not in the country voted. And we know equally surely that many of those persons came forward by way of sworn affidavit and, and video recordings to say, I was right here, never went anywhere, don't have a passport, um, haven't left the country since 2014 or whatever. These are truths we know. All of that culminates in one thing, 
the AP and UAFC lost this election, do not want to give up power and have been um, changing the goalposts and creating new narratives as we went along all the way through this, trying to hold on to power. We also know that Mr. Granger's claim for decency and honesty is highly misplaced. He's an indecent rigor who's attempting to steal an election and he's going to be unsuccessful even at that, even at that. So his whole presidency would have failed. Those are the truths we know right now. You raise a very important point, uh, Priya, about the court creating its own jurisdiction. Um, and, and that's a, the basis for the appeal at the CCJ. Um, but Sanjeev, if, if you were to look at this in retrospect, the court creating a jurisdiction that, has, uh, that doesn't exist, um, we, what are, what are the, 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 the possible threats this can, can expose us to? Well, um, look, the difficulties of the court taking a jurisdiction in this way that they have is it creates a precedent. It might happen again. But what has happened is there is a legislative scheme that clearly distinguishing, distinguishes the jurisdiction of the court and as it relates to votes and how votes are being done and how votes are going to be if you have a problem and if you claim that they are not valid and if you claim that there is a problem with the votes you have a, a mechanism to approach the court what this has done is this is trying to change the process there is a confusion now as to and there's a confusion in our jurisprudence about whether the constitutional provision under 163 to say that the High Court shall have exclusive jurisdiction to determine issues as it relates to an election by an election petition, or is it a different jurisdiction that the court has now created in under Article 177, which is not there, to be honest. So are we going to get to the position where what we are going to do and what we're trying to do is we're trying to say, look, we want to have a clear process. You know that if you are an, uh, a political party or an elector and you have a problem with what has gone on, then you know the process that you have to go through is set out in the law. You have to file an election petition. You raise your grievance, you produce your proof, and you move forward. You present it to a judge who will hear it. Now, what this ruling seems to do is this ruling says that the validity of the votes is to be considered in a provision that really relates to the presidency and relates to what is going on with the chief elections officer. By doing that, we have a problem. We have a problem because what, you, what this ruling is being promoted, it doesn't say so, be careful about that, but what it is being promoted by, by those in the government the coalition, is that it somehow gives Mr. Lowenfield the authority to decide on valid votes. Because, and this has been created by the rationale of the judges, what they have put and the things they have said in their reasoning, not their final order, but in the reasoning. And the thing is, there is no support for that even in the reasoning that Lowenfield is entitled to do this. But that's not important. To Abu. What they're doing is creating a narrative. If you look at every press statement that I have seen from the Prime Minister's office, from the party office, on their Facebook page, they're not saying anything about valid votes, you know, they're saying valid and credible votes. So they have added a word in to the process. And by adding that word in, what are they doing? They're trying to say all the time, Ed, that what we are doing and what we are trying to do is we, uh, what they are doing or what they are trying to do is to get low in feel to do what they want. Because the prime minister very curiously said yesterday in the press statement that low in feel will now submit a new report, which will show that the coalition has won the elections by a two thirds majority. Now, firstly, he's not submitted anything since the ruling, which was a few hours before. How do they know what he will submit? Um, so it's being used. It's being used to create confusion. The reality is, at all times, he's supposed to only put in what were the valid votes. He wasn't supposed to do anything else. He was supposed to do what the valid votes were, and that's what he should have tabulated. 
That, that is what his was tabulated in the regions. His job was simple. Add up all the 10 regions, say what each party got, do a calculation of the seats. Now, in terms of what the court itself did yesterday, by taking jurisdiction in a manner when they do not have jurisdiction to do so. That is right, why the PVP is entitled to an appeal. A jurisdiction, jurisdiction of the court is a fact. And if you, cre if you have the wrong jurisdictional fact, if the jurisdictional fact which you rely upon does not in fact exist as you believe it does, then you are entitled to have an appeal against that. Because you're not appealing, you have to understand the distinction. Before a court can hear a matter, the court must be satisfied that, this, that they have the jurisdiction to hear the matter. And we are saying our position is the court did not have the jurisdiction to hear the matter. So the court exceeded its jurisdiction by hearing the matter and pronouncing, which means they did not act within the provision of the statute of the constitution and therefore their ruling is a nullity. So the reason why an appeal is required to for against the decision is because one, the court erroneously created a jurisdictional fact where there was not one. And two, the court wittingly or unwittingly created a confusion in our jurisprudence as to how do you challenge an election and how do you make the claim and did for against, for or against whatever you propose is the issue for which the election is challengeable, whether it is migrant voters, whether it is dead voters, whether it is the process was not correct. They have changed what the, they have created confusion as to how you do it now. The law was very clear all along, you know, Ed. It was very simple. Whenever you had a complaint, you had to wait until a declaration had been made. Then you file an election petition and you produce your evidence to a judge. Now, if it is that you can preempt a declaration and go to the Court of Appeal and have the Court of Appeal intervene and interfere with the process, then how do we know which one you need to do? Because you might have another Court of Appeal differently constituted and you might go to the Court of Appeal and they will say, well, look, we don't see that this is written here. And then what do you do as a citizen? So Sanji, if, if I can interject here, and, and I, if I can interject and ask you, because imperative. the point that you just made about um, how you challenge, one of the things that we recognized yesterday from um, the ruling is that there is a separation that the court attempted to create between challenging the presidency and challenging the elections of members of the National Assembly. I, if you can bring some clarity to that, maybe you or Priya can bring some clarity to that. Well, Ed, that's a very, uh, I don't want to use words because like Priya, I have obligations as an attorney. Um, but if I could do so in the, the probably the kindest possible way, I would say this to you, Ed. Our system, our electoral system works this way. The person who is the leader of the list is the person who is elected. Following the election of that person, we then have a situation which will come about essentially by having persons put in parliament. So if you have removed the people who, the numbers that you have in parliament, you have effectively removed the person as the the president, because then he has no, he's not entitled to the numbers that you have declared. So if you declare, for example, your GCOM and you declare that they are 25 votes, just say an argument sake, that there are 25 votes in one way. And then the court says, well, no, it's not 25, it's actually 15. It means those 10 go to somebody else. And if those 10 go to somebody else, somebody else has been elected the president. So when the court now is saying that we are separating the two, it would result in, in a very unusual and, and I dare say preposterous position where you might have the person who is elected the president questioned and he's not the president, but he still has the majority of the seats in the parliament. 
That's not what our, contem our constitution ever contemplated. So it, it is not a separate thing, Ed. It is part of a scheme of how our legislation envisages that when you have a problem with your election, this is the process which you must do stage by stage, step by step. You see the interpretation of the constitution, which 177.4, which was before the court, that came up in the UC Kwayana case. And in the UC Kwayana case, they say, because it was not an, the man, the Burnham had not been elected. He, it was a transitional provision where he came from being prime minister by an act of parliament, he became president because we were moving to an executive presidency. That's why. And in this particular case, unless you question in Granger from 2015 and his election, there is no jurisdiction in this court to question the count that happened now. There is none because what are you going to, how are you going to do that? There's been no one declared as yet. We all know what the numbers are. We all know that the PPP is one, but the law, the letter of the law requires that a declaration take place. And when you go to challenge after that, you will go to the high court by a petition. Ria, let me bring you in here. Um... No, right, Eddie, I want to say that once something is jurisprudentially bad, that means the court is wrong, 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 particularly when it has such mass public health um, public uh, implications, a, a party has a duty in my view, and this is what we were trained to believe in law, to appeal that, to fix the law, to straighten things out so that the people who will be affected um, going forward have a clear understanding of what the law really is. We believe that the Court of Appeal yesterday, the majority, the two judges who ruled that they have jurisdiction were so wrong and that that is so bad in law um, that it must be appealed to fix it. But people are asking us, and Sanjeev gave a very clear description of why it must, why it is jurisprudentially bad and why it must be fixed. I will attempt because people are asking a simple question. Why are you appealing? Just let this thing, because the, the, the ruling didn't change in any way politically um, what the position is. And what that position is, is that we have a count already of valid votes um, and the Court of Appeal didn't say anything different in terms of what all votes cast means all valid votes. We always understood that to be what it was. And the court, the GCOM has always been counting only valid votes. So why PPP do you want to appeal? And let me see, let me help with an answer there. Yesterday, the Court of Appeal gave a ruling that said, when you said more votes cast, you're really talking about more valid votes cast. The AP and UAFC and all their sur surrogates, um, James Bond and Christopher Jones, the little ones and the big ones, Nagamutu and all of them seem to believe that somehow the court saying more valid votes cast can be interpreted to mean more valid and credible votes cast and that Lowenfield by himself could decide and determine what are valid votes. Nowhere did the court say that. Nowhere did the court say that Lowenfield or Ropes and Ben or um, Alexander or Claudette Singh or a combination of all of them could determine what valid votes are. But you have a real situation facing us and that is that Mr. Lowenfield, given the telegraph position from the um, prime minister, the, the squatting prime minister and his delegates, you see him saying that Mr. Lowenfield is going to present a report that discounts those votes he does not himself believe are valid votes. That will probably happen because we know what has been happening in this country regarding elections for the last few um, months. When Mr. Lowenfield does that, it will be rejected by the commission who has already said very clearly that we are not in a position at the commission level, while we believe some serious allegations have been made and they should be investigated, we are not in a position to investigate those allegations. So they are going to throw Mr. Lowenfield's report back at him and say, we are asking you only to calculate the number of seats based on the valid votes you gave us. The AP and you will find another David, Ms. David, 
or they will use Miss David again, or David Granger himself might go to the court now, taking off his mask of pretense and say, court who gave itself jurisdiction that it never had, could you interpret for us what valid votes mean? And that court, having given itself jurisdiction that it never mm -hmm. had, may want to embark on giving mm -hmm. itself jurisdiction again for something mm -hmm. it does not have, and may want to determine what valid votes are and may want to say what who can determine what valid votes are and will be wholly wrong again. So it is important not only jurisprudentially that we clear this up, but that we speak um, through the highest court of this land, the Caribbean Court of Justice, uh, to say that this court has no jurisdiction to make any of these determinations and once and for all finish this matter. And so why are we appealing? We're appealing because the court was wrong jurisprudentially, but also to stop the court from doing what has already been telegraphed to us that they will be approached to do, and that is to determine what valid votes are and to determine um, who can determine what those valid votes are. And so it's very important that we do file this appeal and that it's heard um, expeditiously. I mean, we're in COVID time, so that will probably have some, uh, we'll see. But it's important that the appeal is filed. And, and these are, I hold a view like Sanjeev, and we say these things a little cautiously because sometimes we're stuck in old ages about what criticisms can be leveled at courts. But I would like to challenge that now to say we're in a modern time, we're in a different time from when those rules first came out and courts are public bodies. Um, beholden to the public doing right and they must understand that when they're making decisions you would see yesterday and I'm not going to go into what some of the commentary is but you'll see yesterday that with the public the country the world on the world wide web being exposed to how judges are ruling even how they sound even how um, confident they sound the people are are going to question um, our public institutions that are beholden to the said people more and more. And that is something that has to be encouraged um, across the world and definitely here in Ghana. So why are we appealing? We're appealing because we believe that AP and UAFC is not going to stop both at their attempt to rig the election and at their attempt to co corrupt various public officers. We have seen it from Mingo to Lowenfield, to people in the commission, to people outside of the commission, to various public officers, you can define those for yourselves. And that that effort is not going to stop unless we have um, a clear understanding of who has jurisdiction to do what and who doesn't. And so that's why we have to appeal the matter. Uh, Priya, you, you raise an interesting point there about um, attempting to rig, and, and we know the facts. The facts are out there uh, since the about the 5th of March with the Mingo attempts and now um, what Lowen Field is attempting to present to the, um, the commission and also uh, the attempts to use the court uh, to get the Lowen Field uh, figures in. But um, is this a case where the, the APNU, having recognized they lost the elections by way of balance, uh, where the people voted them out. Is this an attempt to, to maybe get into power using technicalities, um, which essentially means when you look at what Lowen Field is presenting is disenfranchising over 270,000 people who got up on the morning of, of March 2nd, joined the line at the polling station and cast their ballots. Well, I don't think we have to guess. Kamraj Ramjitan, who has so disappointed me, you know, I wrote him a letter, I'm going to drop it off at his house. To say that he's a, a rotten citizen, really. He said very clearly in his language, in his voice to his staff that they had lost the elections, that the PPP had won the elections by some 15,000 votes, that the CARICOM people had said that. And then a day later, recanted by saying, oh, well, hold on a second here. When I said that, I didn't realize that there a technicality might put us into office. A technicality, the AP and you can win on a technicality. Listen, votes, um, elections are a means of allowing the people of a country to express themselves, to speak through their ballot. And you can't technically take that away. You can't technically erase that. And if anyone wants to not only rely on a technicality, but to boast of a win based on a technicality, then they're really rotten human beings. This is not, um, we're not 
unsure, Eddie, of what the, the APNU is not saying at all that they won the elections, you know. Remember before the recount what the narrative was? We won the elections. And once we recount, the, the recount will show that we won the elections with more votes. It's now no longer that they won the elections with more votes. It is that we didn't win the elections with more votes. More votes went to the PPPC, but those more votes based on a technicality should be lessened by one man named Lowenfield, who is acting at our, on our instructions at our behest. And he must now give in a report that shows the AP and UAFC taking a two third majority in the National Assembly better than when Barnum rigged the elections, if you can really describe this kind of thing as better. Um, and we're going to assume the presidency and take control of this country uh, to continue not serving people. Because again, we come to the place, look Eddie, right now, we have 21 more um, COVID cases out of 39 tests. Guyana started the COVID lockdown and the COVID efforts at the same time that Grenada and St. Vincent and Trinidad and Barbados started theirs. Those countries are practically COVID free and are starting their reopening. Guyana is adding more numbers to its um, list of persons who are COVID positive. And do you know why that is? Because we, our government is a total failure in almost everything they do and they were unable to effectively manage this problem. And so there was no assistance given to people so that they could stay home. There was no assistance given regarding masks, the distribution of masks or um, sanitizing material. The effort to stop gatherings became a targeted, a targeted at political opponents to shut the voices of political opponents down. And so this government is not even seeking power so that it could serve people. It's seeking power so that it could do what the Kaichur News said yesterday on its front page. Large masses, amounts of um, expensive, valuable land is being given to friends and family. And so there's it's not even an effort to serve. The point I make here is they're not in this for service they're not in this for a righteous cause they're not in fighting here um not only the pppc and all the small parties but the world because let's bear in mind here eddie the entire world has spoken on this matter the commonwealth caricom oas group of countries individual countries in fact the oas said um as recently as last week i believe that the elections were won by the PPP and the AP and UAFC should begin the transition. Pro and for other words, hand over the government to the People's Progressive Party who won these elections. And so the only people AP and UAFC are serving and are lying to are themselves and they're very faithful um, supporters. And for me, that is, is really reprehensible because people look to them for leadership, genuine leadership. And they're lying to those people, which really speaks to the fact that they have no regard for their supporters and their um, their obligation to tell the truth to those supporters. So the AP and UAFC is attempting to stay in power here, not even based on a technicality, because no technicality could take away people's votes. They're attempting to stay in power here because they have managed to corrupt Mr. Lowenfield, however they have done that, whether by coercion or bribery, and they're attempting to corrupt other public officers. And so that is how they have stayed in power here. No, no other way. And no other way will help them to stay in power because you can't get rid of the votes. The people of Ghana went to the polling place, marked their ballots, and those ballots have been counted and recorded as valid votes. They are credible because nothing has made them incredulous and nothing has invalidated them so far. And so there's only really one result at the end of all of this, the count that has already been submitted to the Ghana Elections Commission of 460,352 valid votes being counted with the People's Progressive Party having 15,416 more votes than the APNU. Um we are almost out of time, but Sanjeev, I want to bring you in here. Priya touched on a point of the international uh, community and their positions. Uh, we have seen from the, the, the very onset when Mr. Mingo attempted his fraud, um, the international community, international observers, local observers recognizing that 
the, the copies of statements of poll that were put out by the PPP that uh, was received from GCOM um, were never challenged. And the fact that the recount has now, and, and at that point you were hearing any attempt to, to uh, fraudulently seize power or to, to, to go against the will of the people may attract sanction, uh, sanctions, not just for individuals, but eventually it could be sanctions for the country. Um, do you think now with a recount, which has been authenticated by CARICOM, um, Priya mentioned the OAS, um, the EU, the Carter Center and so forth. Do you still, do you think if any attempt is made to maybe seize power um, through these technicalities or uh, Priya in simple terms we said just now uh, amongst the bullyism, do you think, do you see these, these, these sanctions off the table? No. Um that would definitely not be the position. Um, the, sorry, that is definitely not the position, but we have to understand what has happened. Regrettably, we seem to be going from one stage to another to another, where this same objective that commenced with Mingo is being con it is being continued in different ways and different forms. Um, it is, I mean, look, I honestly thought that once we had cleared the entire Mingo debacle when everybody saw what transpired, everybody witnessed what it was, we said we'd go to a recount, everyone said we'd respect the votes, the recount, whatever came out of it, we would respect it. Whatever GCOM says, we are going to respect it. I thought, well, this means that the process is going to get back on track. Guyana is going to uh, Guyana is going to refer to itself now with some credibility instead of the shame that we we have in trying to do simple things. I thought these things would go, but then what happens? We then come to another hurdle. And every time we get there, we get a different sort of thing happen. We have court cases filed by people who are supposedly just citizens and neutral. We Every step forward that we have, we have something in the works to stop it. Now, do we believe that this is the last attempt? If, you were, if I were to tell you the truth, I don't think that this is the last attempt. Do we need to file an appeal so that we can stop the obvious misinterpretation and pollution of what valid votes mean? It is necessary. You have to understand, Ed, that they are taking this, they have telegraphed it to everyone, that what they will do is they will take this as their own thing and they will take what they want to be valid votes. They will remove 270, 260,000 people. And if we go back to just how they remove them, you know, this is what happens. An objection is made by APNU, has no proof to it, has no basis. An objection is made as a result of that objection. Not proven, they decide all the votes in this box, we remove it. And this is what is happening. So eventually what you have done is you have removed all the votes in boxes where they have raised a complaint. So you have disenfranchised 60% of the electorate. Do you know what, Ed? It is a sad reality. But if you were down at the Atachung Convention Center, you would have realized. In South Georgetown, the count went really quick. We got to 100 ballots, ballot boxes counted on that day. And why? because there were no objections made in South Georgetown. North Georgetown, similarly, there were not many objections made. Linden went at the speed of light. There were not many objections made in those boxes. So essentially what has happened is this. They have now made all the objections, region six, if you look at the figures, which they're saying when they would move what they term infected boxes, APNU one region six. That's the reality. Those, that contrived way of simply disenfranchising people is 
utterly reprehensible and it is the most naked attempt I have ever seen to trans, to simply rub out what you don't want, declare, well, why did we have an election? I mean, they literally could have just stood up and say, listen, the vote count is this, save all the time, save the $8 billion. We didn't need to go to the elections for this because this is imaginary. This is figments of the imagination of the people. And to, to pick up a little bit on what Priya said, there is law and there is case law around the region that has said in election matters repeatedly that the results of an election and the vote is not to be determined by technicalities. It is determined by the will of the people at the ballot boxes and nothing should be entertained and nothing should be done to take away the will of the people. Our statute, our law says very clearly that if you look at a ballot and it is a genuine authentic ballot paper with the security features that you use and then you see that it is so and you can discern what is the intention of the voter, then you must give effect to that. If they scratched it up, that's a problem. If they voted for more than one candidate, that's a problem. This, the law provides for that. But everything else is a valid vote and everything else must be considered. Now, if you want to say that because the poll book was not with that box, you will disenfranchise people, they have nothing to do with the poll book. The poll book is, G, this is GCOM's job. They must do it. So Ed, we hope. We hope. Sanjeev, Priya, thank you very much for joining us this morning. And uh, to our viewers, we want to say thanks so much for being part of this program. We're going to be back here at about 1 p.m. to give you another update in terms of how uh, things are progressing with regards to the appeal and any developments that would have taken place uh, between now and that time. Again, Priya, Sanjeev, thanks for being here. And to our viewers, have a good rest of the day. Happy to have been thank here. Thank you, Ed. Take care. May your God be with you.